Hello, my name is John Jessup. I work with IBM Software Group Services and I'm here to you know, give you a little bit of a background and presentation on the use of Rational System Architects Simulator. And uh, in particular, we're going to talk a little bit about the simulator, demonstrate its capabilities briefly, but quickly get to the concept of working with the simulator optimizer, which will allow us to quickly get to some solutions that work for us. What I show here on the screen right now are a number of appropriate uses that might be put into place to use simulation. You can see we might be trying to find bottlenecks, reduce cost, bring in new capacity, those types of things. In System Architect, we work with the simulator in terms of working with business process modeling notation techniques. And so I'll go ahead and open up a business process diagram. Here we have a fairly simple process, one that basically is a pattern of approval. We have the idea of a tax form being submitted, being assessed for compliance, and some probability distribution that sends some off relative to a risk, therefore needing audit versus a uh, needing to uh, process the tax form as it is. And we see both of those paths actually can result in a rejection uh, or a form being accepted. So we have three process tax tasks within this process, assess tax compliance, audit the tax form, and uh, process the tax form. So what I want to get right to is looking at our simulator. Maybe before we do that, though, let's use a report generator report to see what kind of simulation parameters have been applied. Here we see I have created a report looking at business process simulation quantities, meaning the quantity of this task, and the processing time. So I'll go ahead and generate that report. And I see that the result is that I have a my three processes, assess tax compliance, audit tax form, and process form. Each have a quantity of one, meaning as if there was one desk in the operation uh, operating uh, with this process. And we have a time profile that varies for each one. And uh, in this case, the time pro profile for the uh, assess tax compliance is five minutes. Same for the process the tax form, five minutes, and we see an audit tax form uh, takes uh, two hours. We're just using constants here rather than distributions, uh, but of course our process simulator would also allow you to set up distributions that are based on some uh, statistical assumptions. So let's go ahead and uh, run our uh, simulator, uh, but maybe before we do, let's take a look at what is going to be coming in relative to the uh, BPM and events, the events generating the objects. And uh, here what we see is that this object, uh, customer submits tax form, which we see right here. Uh, that object is uh, having a uh, arrival profile of one every minute. So we can see that we have the number one here in this um, inter-arrival time that's, uh, that's shown, uh, again, using a, a constant. So again, one minute, every minute a form comes in, takes five minutes to process. If it goes to the first process, they all go to the first process. If it goes to the process tax form, that takes five minutes. Anything that goes up here is going to take two hours. So if we go ahead and run our simulation, uh, we end up with a uh, choosing tools and simulator and running the simulation ends up launching uh, the simulator which is a uh, product that's uh, provided to us through a third party uh, Lanner Corporation provides us the witness software and we can see that this process is running along here our 1440 that's the uh, number of minutes in a day and I can see that my uh, process is uh, generating uh, what we would kind of expect, a queue up here in the assessed tax compliance and the um, uh, 
that desk not be keeping up with things as well as we've got a queue building up here in the uh, audit tax form area as well. We'll go ahead and run this to the end just to see our results and we can see that our uh, our total results are a large queue in the assessed tax compliance. We maybe have a couple, little over a couple of a hundred that have been processed uh, either through acceptance or rejection and we have a big queue building up in the audit tax form. Now if we wanted to try to understand how many desks we needed for each one of these processes we could end up going back to System Architect, plug in some numbers here and there and, and try to just do a trial and error to get to that. This is where the model optimizer comes in though and can save us a good bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and under the model tool in the, in the SA simulator window I choose optimize and this brings up a dialog box then that allows me to enter in a set of variables and an objective that we want to reach. When we Once we do those two things then this optimize button will become available to us. So let me go ahead and add in uh, a variable. We see a dialog box that brings up our process tax form uh, diagram and the three items that are on that. I'm going to go ahead and take this first one, assess tax compliance, and look at that general activity branch and I can see I can put in a quantity. Once that quantity uh, is selected I can put in a range. So I know that one is not enough so let's put in two and, and maybe a maximum of ten with a step size of two for the testing to be done relative to running the optimization. I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, other two items. Uh, the next one is the process tax form and I'll go ahead and just put in the same simulation parameters there 2, 10 for a max, step size of 2 and finally our audit cycle. Now we can help ourselves out a little bit recognizing this takes about two hours probably have a pretty good backlog Let's put in 2 as a minimum again, but let's put in a maximum of 20 and see how that works. I'll put in a step size of 2 again just to, uh, to be consistent. So we have our three variables. We now choose our objective function, which is the dashboard throughput, meaning we want to maximize our throughput. And uh, one of the things I notice is my optimize button is available to me. Notice though that I can also click on this sample run and that will update this estimated total time because depending on my simula simulation I, I might take some time so uh, some of these things uh, in this case makes, takes two hours and 37 seconds or two minutes and 37 seconds uh, and that's a pretty reasonable amount of time. So let's go ahead and uh, click on our optimize button. Result is a dialog box as we see here and go ahead and click on run. That uh, brings up a number of other dialog boxes where we can see a graph of the objective and how it's being met, our throughput again. Uh, we see that a, a spreadsheet of information is being uh, populated where uh, the numbers for the different quantities are changing and uh, this is kind of my uh, window to see uh, how much longer uh, some of my runs are going to take. Uh, total time here is still 2 minutes and 13 seconds and I also have a visual of what's being tested as we go along there. So it's kind of nice to have see a little bit of action. Notice that the first run came in uh, a little bit under 400 uh, and now um, a second grouping of runs uh, started starting to push up around a throughput of 700. So in each case we're actually well over our um, throughput of a couple of hundred that we were uh, doing in our, our first uh, simulation without um, thinking through optimization. While this is running I just want to uh, come over to our uh, IBM website and uh, uh, let you know where you can find out more about our uh, class offerings relative to some of the training offerings that we have uh, through IBM and our business partners. Uh, this is a website I went to uh, IBM.com so if you uh, just go to IBM.com and then uh, in within that site uh, search on rational training paths and you'll uh, get to your to get to the point of being able to see a set of training paths 
that uh, will bring you to a different number of different roles and we see that we end up with the uh, the process analyst as a possible role and we have some suggestions here in terms of the training path uh, we have some uh, online web-based uh, information uh, basically four hours uh, we see a one-day classroom for the fundamentals of system architect uh, and then uh, working in general with BPMN, Business Process Modeling Notation. If you're well versed in the use of BPMN and the basics of System Architect, then you could probably go uh, directly to the um, uh, simulation uh, offerings. Again, a, a web-based one-hour overview as well as a, a full one-day class. Uh, there's enough in the, the simulator as well that uh, many times I will end up with a services engagement rather than a uh, uh, an engagement that is uh, oriented just towards a uh, base offering uh, because once we start simulating the actual processes, uh, we might end up going through some of the class material and then actually end up with some courses that are uh, useful for our um, the particular uh, subject that's at hand. Okay, uh, let me uh, go ahead and minimize that. I think our optimization is finished. Uh, we see that by our little dialog here, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And uh, with that done, I can see that I end up ended up with uh, some results uh, starting to push up towards 850. And what I can do is uh, go ahead and uh, look at that as a uh, opportunity to uh, review the results a little bit more closely. Uh, that's easily done uh, by uh, look, taking a look at a uh, spreadsheet analysis. I'm going to go ahead and open up a uh, new spreadsheet and uh, I can copy and paste uh, this information into the spreadsheet. Uh, then it allows me to do some sorts. So I'm going to sort uh, based on the uh, dashboard throughput and the evaluation number. I kind of want to find that uh, highest number uh, and uh, what was required in terms of the different quantities which we have listed in these columns C, D, and E uh, for each process step. So uh, working with a sort uh, here, looking at the throughput and uh, the evaluation, that first column is the evaluation number. Uh, I can see we have some sorts that are uh, giving me information back to uh, here, run number 119, actually reached the 833 with a combination of 6, 4, and 20. So uh, the column 6, that's for the assessed tax compliance. Uh, the, um, uh, the 4 is for the process tax form, and the um, uh, audit is uh, is going to be the quantity of 20. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, try those numbers in my simulation. And so I'll, I'll go ahead and close this out. Uh, I'll give me, it gives me an opportunity to save this uh, optimization run. I'll go ahead and do that uh, because we can actually uh, bring it uh, back uh, fairly quickly. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and save that to my desktop as a um, first run of optimizer. And uh, we'll go ahead and close this, uh, this simulation window. So uh, again, my change is going to be for the quantities of these three items. I'll just go ahead and multi-select those and then uh, right click on one of them and choose edit. Each one of those dialog boxes open up and I can see my assessed tax compliance. That was the one that was going to be a quantity of six. Uh, my audit tax form, that's the one that I wanted to have a quantity of 20. And finally my process tax form, I could have a quantity of four. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click OK. And uh, I can again run my report generator report to uh, just verify that I've gotten my uh, quantities right with the right uh, items. And uh, we can then go ahead and run our simulation one more time. Save the diagram and 
we'll open up the simulator. So with the simulator, uh, we again end up with a uh, process that's uh, visually running for us. Uh, I'll just um, move that into view here a little bit and we can see that we're actually doing pretty well. Our queue isn't building up. We've got uh, a number in process for the audit tax form, which we would expect, uh, but uh, in general we're, uh, we're not having a lot of buildup. I'm going to go ahead and run that all the way to the end and we see a result of both our assessed tax compliance and process tax form uh, do not have anything in the input queue. They do have a couple of uh, items that are in process. Uh, that's the number four here and the number three here. And we're running pretty well. Notice that my audit tax form, uh, I, my high-end range of 20, I probably would want to go back into my optimizer and uh, maybe give it a little bit more room because it looks like I can actually get some additional uh, throughput. But we can certainly see that we very quickly were able to come up with a number of quantities that could allow us to uh, process this customer submitting the tax form uh, at the, the rate that we were estimating at. We uh, have a very simple process here. It's not dealing with shifts or roles and those types of things. But uh, if we were to have a, a, a role uh, that was being participating, we would be able to associate a cost with that, and uh, we could also vary the number of uh, persons that are actually participating, or if it was a machine-oriented uh, process, we could also uh, put in some costs relative to that. So I hope that uh, you found this to be useful in terms of your uh, taking a look at the uh, essay simulator. And uh, as you're uh, looking at uh, possibly using the simulator, uh, please be sure to uh, make use of the, uh, uh, the optimizer. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact us through uh, IBM.com. Uh, and actually that uh, training website is a, a good place for you to start. Thank you for your time.